Ladies and gentlemen, will you please stand for the posting of the colors by the Metropolitan Police Department's Honor Guard, and please remain standing for the singing of the national anthem by police officer Eva Miller and tonight's invocation by police chaplain Amber Cole. say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the this fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare and the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night Father, we thank you right now for another graduating class, Father. We thank you that you'll continue to be with them, touch them, guide them, lead them. We ask you, we just give you this service today. We give you this program, Father, for you to make a mark in each one of our lives. In his name, amen. Please be seated, everyone. Good evening, everyone. What a handsome group tonight. I'm sure very proud parents and family. I'm Melanie Moon. I want to welcome you to the graduation ceremony for the Recruit Class 2014-01. We are thrilled that you are with us for this very important ceremony, recognizing these 25 men and women who have chosen to serve our community. They spent 29 weeks of training in the classroom, at the range, and in the gym to get ready to become St. Louis police officers. The department's police academy prepared them for one of the most noble and unselfish professions that exist, a career in law enforcement. Please allow me now to introduce those seated on the platform tonight. I ask you that you please Hold your applause until I've introduced everyone. The Honorable Francis, Francis G. Slade, Mayor of the City of St. Louis. <coughs> Colonel Sam Dotson, Chief of Police. 
Lieutenant Colonel Alfred Atkins, Assistant Chief of Police. Lieutenant Colonel Lawrence O'Toole, Deputy Chief, Bureau of Professional Standards. Lieutenant Colonel Paul Nochurio, Deputy Chief, Bureau of Community Policing. Lieutenant Colonel Reggie Harris, Deputy Chief, Bureau of Auxiliary Services. Lieutenant Daniel Cole, Director of the St. Louis Police Academy. Police Chaplain Amber Cole, who delivered our invocation. to my far left. These are the men and the women who will help guide these new officers during their careers with the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department. Welcome everyone and thank you so much for taking part in tonight's ceremony. Please give them a round of applause. And now to offer his congratulations to these newest police officers, Mayor Francis Slane. to stand before these 25 brave men and women. Ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at a new generation of St. Louis police officers. These men and women graduating this evening have met and surpassed the very high standards of our outstanding police academy and are continuing one of the greatest traditions in American law enforcement. They will bear a new standard of a department that is an agency of city government. What does that mean? It means that these men and women will become part and be major players in, on a larger team. They will be working with other city departments to make our city safer and more livable. These officers are also the backbone of our economic growth. People come to St. Louis, do business, live, to spend money, when they feel safe, and when they are safe. You new officers will help make that a reality for hundreds of thousands of residents and visitors to our city each and every day. With teamwork, we will protect the city. We will keep people safe. We will continue to make crime go down. Together, you will help protect each other. You can prevent crime. You can make a difference and you can and will bring justice to crime victims. You have not chosen a job, but a career. It takes a very special person to become a police officer. When you put on that badge every morning, or afternoon, or whatever time of day, you take an oath to put others before yourselves. It is a selfless act. On behalf of the people of St. Louis, I want to thank you for taking on this very, very important responsibility. I know from Chief Dotson what a outstanding class this is and how each of the graduates is up to the challenges ahead, and you'll hear more about that as the, as the ceremony continues. But I congratulate all of you, and I, again, I want to thank you. Always keep in mind why you're here and why you chose this career to protect and to serve. To Chief Dodson, the command staff, and academy staff, thank you so much for your investment that you've made in these young people. They are the future of this department and uh, now the present, part of the present. To the commanders and the supervisors to whom the class has been assigned, please watch over these young officers, help them become as good as you are. To the family and friends of the officers who are here tonight, thank you for guiding these officers to a career in service. They could not do this without your support, and they're gonna need your continued support uh, into the future. Please know that we treasure them as much as you do, and that they constantly will be in our prayers. I want you all to know that I support you, and I'm very proud of you. Congratulations to the new officers. I know you will represent the city well. Thank you. 
you so much, Mayor Slim. Chief Dodson will now offer his congratulations to the graduate class of 2014-01 and then administer the oath of office. Good evening. Normally, when I speak at graduation, I have the luxury of focusing my attention on the new officers who sit before you at an optimistic start of their new careers. Every one of them has worked hard earning the right to be here, and they deserve to be recognized for it. But tonight, I must temper my usual tone by speaking about some of the serious challenges everyone, including and especially these young officers, must be prepared to face. For this ceremony, it takes place under the shadow of two distinct events, one distant and one much more recent. The long shadow is that of Officer Nicholas Sloan, to whose memory Class 2014-01 is dedicated. Nick was killed in the line of duty nearly 10 years to the day before these recruits started their training. One member of the class, soon to be Officer Adam Zeider, grew up across the street from the Sloan family and was sponsored in his candidacy by Nick's father, retired Sergeant Terry Sloan. I mention this so you will know the dedication of a police officer is not merely symbolic, it's personal. We remember him because policing is not just a profession, it's a family. Nick was a beloved member of our police family and was taken from us as no member of any family ever should be. The other shadow looming over this evening is the one that we all, all know far too well, cast by the recent crisis which began in Ferguson, which, which, which now reaches far beyond the city limits of any city in this country. The current storm has passed, and our region is calm again, for the moment. But we must not fall into complacency. The issues raised over the past few weeks will not and should not go away. Ferguson has revealed an ongoing distrust felt by some towards the police. Ferguson has shown that despite all the progress of the past four decades, we still have much work to do and much to fear if we don't do the work right now. The men and women who came together to protest in our streets did so because they share a sense of disappointment in our society. They believe that society has failed to meet some of the most important goals. They see Ferguson as a symbol for the future. We know on a fundamental level that they are not wrong. Our society has failed young people in many undeniable and heartbreaking ways. When our children look into their future, they should see only paths to success but far too many of them look ahead and see a broken trail covered by dangerous obstacles with tragedy at the end sometimes. But now, in 2014, there are too many people who feel and have a reason to feel the main institutions of society are ignoring or working against them. We know and we must face the fact that this is especially true in the African American community. What does this mean? It means we know there is fear of the police, even in where places where the police are needed the most. And we know we must work harder than ever to replace that fear with open communication and mutual trust. And this is where we must all pray to find cause for optimism, for I cannot imagine any two groups which have more to gain by working together than the police and the community. I say that because crime takes such a disproportionate toll in some of our communities, Many of the areas in which our city stand to benefit most from police service are, mo are most distrusting of us. And this, which is true of crime in general, is especially true of violent crime. Nick Sloan dedicated his life to stopping that violence. He didn't argue about the color of people he was asked to protect. He risked his life and made it the ultimate sacrifice in a struggle to protect everyone from crime and violence. These recruits who graduate tonight, they are making the same pledge, accepting the same risk. Like the nearly 1,300 officers who stand beside them, they are promising to go where they are most needed and to protect the people who need them the most. They are going out into our streets to work toward a better world, a safer world, a world in which fewer mothers and fathers will ever feel the pain that comes with bearing a child. And if that vision is not the basis for unity, I don't know what is. 
So to the class of 2014-01, you have my sincere respect and admiration for the career path that you've chosen. You are going to make all of us proud as you start out on your careers, and I couldn't be proud of you, more proud of you. Thank you very much. So if you'll please stand and raise your right, you're already ahead of me, and raise your right hand. They're overachievers already. <laughs> raise your right hand and repeat after me. I solemnly swear, I solemnly swear that I am a citizen of the United States and the state of Missouri, that I will faithfully support the Constitution of the United States and of the state of Missouri. That I, will, that I will, to the best of my skill and ability, diligently and faithfully, without partiality or prejudice, discharge my duties as a police officer, according to the laws of the state of Missouri, and the ordinances of the city of St. Louis, that I will strictly obey, all lawful rules and orders of the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department, the Chief of Police, or any officer placed by them over me, that I will not cease to perform my duties as a police officer until discharged or until my resignation is accepted by the Chief of Police, so help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Chief Johnson. Now the president of the class 2014-01 is Darius Rutley. Please welcome him now to the podium. He's gonna offer a few remarks on behalf of his fellow classmates. Good evening. Good evening. On behalf of the class of 2014-01, I would like to take a moment to recognize our honored platform guests to my left. Let me also thank the Academy Director, Lieutenant Daniel Cole, the Assistant Academy Director, Sergeant Taylor, all the commanders of the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department, and all of our family and friends. Thank you all for attending. February 10th, 2014, was the start of a new chapter in the book of each one of our lives. Chapter 14, page one. In six and a half months, we have written an incredible story that is expected to only get better as we begin the next chapter tonight. Only a select few wear the badge, and only a select few represent what it symbolizes. The badge symbolizes public trust. Thank you, Officer Reed. We came to the Academy expected to learn, to be pushed, and to be challenged beyond our limits, and the Academy succeeded in doing that. The fact that our class was named as a dedication class helped raise the bar on what would be expected of us, and I'm proud to stand here today in honor of Officer Nick Sloan. Officer Sloan, I know you're watching over us, and I hope Class 1401 has made and will continue to make you proud. With leaving the academy, I would like to share a few memories. Officer Colombo, thank you for reminding us that the class was unbelievable, <laughs> and not necessarily in a good way. <laughs> you did a great job as a class supervisor, and we definitely could not have done it without you. Officer Bailey, our assistant class supervisor, thank you for showing us the important elements of criminal investigation and patrol. <laughs> Officer Miller, thank you for being that mother away from home and keeping us in line during inspections. <laughs> Thank 
To Officer McGuire, thank you for teaching us traffic and the standard field sobriety test. I think everyone developed some nystagmus from that class. <laughs> to Officer Green, we won't forget your always exciting good morning. <laughs> and I want to thank you for always reminding us to never play anything cheap. To Officer Allen, thank you for always reminding us that when needed, to cuff <laughs> and it was just that simple. <laughs> I would like to thank the range instructors for making us proficient in our tactics. I can hear Officer Long right now saying, let's go, get it done, you know what to do. <laughs> and Officer Thomas, I'm sure none of us will ever forget you yelling, police stop. It was bone chilling. <laughs> Mr. Kelso, thank you for always ensuring that we were doing exercises correctly. And last, but certainly not least, Mrs. Rossellman. <laughs> I thank you every day after PT, even though it hurt. It's, it's hurting right now as I'm having a flashback. <laughs> you made each and every one of us physically and mentally tougher than the day we were we walked through those academy doors. So again, today I want to say thank you. Class 1401, we learned quite a bit in these past six months. We learned that what we thought was cool was not cool. We learned to give everyone a chance. We learned that we're always on bad terms. <laughs> we learned that even with no voice, you can still be heard. <laughs> We learned that the smallest can be the strongest. And we were taught as a child to never judge a book by its cover. And today I'm saying, never judge a recruit by their first three weeks. <laughs> Most importantly, the academy taught us that we represent good. We uphold the law. And to always keep pushing and always keep fighting. In closing, I would like to leave you with a quote. I want you guys to remember that the truth is the truth, even if no one believes it. And a lie is a lie, even if everyone believes it. We've cheated on our fears, we broke up with our doubts, and now we're about to marry our dreams. Class 1401, we made it. But there is still one more task left for us to perform. I said before that our class was dedicated to the memory of Officer Nick Sloan. As a symbol of that dedication, we have the great honor of presenting him with a photograph of the class. We want to present it to Officer Sloan's mother, Chris, and his sister, Kelly. To the Sloan family, we know the pain of Nick's loss will be with you forever. But let this photograph stand as proof that the pride of his example will never die, but live on always to guide all those who become his kin by joining the family of police. Thank you.
Thank you, Darius. It is time now to present these new officers with their badges and their certificates. Chief Dotson, with the assistance of Lieutenant Colonel Alfred Atkins, will issue the badges. Class Supervisor Police Officer Michael Colombo will announce the new officers. As he approaches the podium, I ask that the platform guest please stand. Officer Jonathan Bachman. <laughs> Officer Christopher Chamblin. Officer Brian Kaling. <laughs> Officer Brandon Clark. Officer Sean Cleveland. <laughs> Officer Kevin Dang. Officer Roland Di Gregorio. <laughs> Officer Kayla Devine. Officer Alex Hensler. <laughs> Officer Carlando Helm. Officer Cameron Jackson.
Officer Christian Johnson. Officer Trenton Lee. Officer Jane McKibben. <laughs> Officer Anthony Meyer. Officer Steven Nelson. <laughs> Officer Kyle Ramsey. Officer Darius Rutland. <laughs> Officer Darrell Sherell. Officer Quincy Silver. <laughs> Officer Kendra Steven. Officer Fabian Thomas.
Officer Janine Waters. Officer Adam Zider. platform guest may now be seated. And to our new officers, we have one still making his way down a few to their seats. I want you to please uh, turn around and face the audience. for their individual achievements and to say a few words on behalf of the Academy and to present the special awards is Officer Michael Colombo. I now have the gratifying task of acknowledging, acknowledging some of our officers with a few special awards. For although everyone in this class worked hard, some stood out. Officers, when I call your names, please stand up. Officer Darius Rutland. Our first award of the evening goes to the uh, recruit who best represents the department's core values of leadership, integrity, service, and fair treatment to everyone. By stepping forward into the role of leader, he or she must show flawless character along with strong sense of justice. In the eyes of the Academy staff, there can be no question that recruits in the class president, Officer Darius Rutland. He is uh, awarded the, um, the Core of Excellence Award. Officer Ray LaFave, please stand up. <laughs> the Academy's physical training program is difficult and demanding. It includes dimensions like strength training, flexibility, agility, and endurance, along with the relentless schedule of cardiovascular work. To be the best in this category requires more than just physical fitness. 
It takes character and commitment. The top spot of physical training goes to Ray LaFay. Officer Roland DiGregorio. The classroom curriculum in the police academy includes 16 different subjects, such as constitutional law, traffic, criminal investigations, human behavior, and report writing, to name of just a few. Each subject includes a comprehensive final exam, and it is not uncommon for recruits to face three or four exams in the same week. Officer DiGregorio, out of a possible 100 points for your final combined academic average, you received a 94.7. Officer Sean Cleveland, please stand up. One of the Academy's most important and challenging courses in defensive tactics. To master this course, a recruit must combine classroom learning with the ability to perform various practical techniques like handcuffing, subject control, intermediate weapons, and empty hand com combat. The safety of the officer and the citizens alike depend on these skills. There were 24 other recruits who literally fought to get, to the, to get this award, but also Sean Cleveland, you won. Please stand. The Academy's firearm program includes more than 100 hours of training and requires a mastery of two different weapons. The culminating challenges of this course is a 180 round pistol qualification test in which recruits are expected to accurately fire a handgun from distances up to 25 yards. Out of a maximum possible score of 900 points, Officer Adam Zyder scored 900 points. <laughs> Adam Zyder is our top gun. Finally, we come to the highest award, the best overall. To achieve this distinction, a recruit cannot stand out in just one or two areas of training. He or she must excel in all of them. Core values, academics, physical training, defensive tactics, and firearms. The formula used to calculate best overall demands performance at or near the top of every category. Officer Zyder, you are part of this class that has dedicated itself to the memory of Nicholas Sloan. It must be more than mere coincidence that you are also a friend of the Sloan family who grew up across the street from them. You are the best overall recruit in class 2014-01. Congratulations. of these new officers for their commitment to serving our community. Because of all of you, St. Louis is a safer and a better place to live and a better place to visit tonight. We are so proud of all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, again, I don't know how you can outdo yourself, but I'm sure you will. Let's have a big round of applause for the newest members of the Metropolitan Police Department, our city's
incredible. I was here six months ago for another ceremony. You guys have shown them up. Our city's finest, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you now for clapping so well and cheering and for joining us this evening to celebrate the exciting growth of our police force. And a very special thanks to the good people here at Car Lane Middle School for allowing us to use their lovely facilities. I want to remind everyone to join us for a reception in the cafeteria that will be immediately following the ceremony so you can go and cheer and yell some more. I now ask that uh, Chaplain Amber Cole give the benediction and please stand and remain standing as the Metropolitan Police Department's Honor Guard retires the colors. Father, we thank you for another class that we give them to you, Father. We ask you to continue to order their steps. May you put a hedge of protection around each and every one of them. We ask, for thank, we ask for decisions that are made by you. Father, as they see past what they, their eyesight sees, Father, that you give them direction. You give them comfort. Give their family comfort when they leave out the door, Father, and celebrate it when they come home. We give you praise and we give you glory that they look to the hills from where they have come from and their help come from you alone. We give you praise and glory. In his name we pray. Amen. As the platform guests exit the stage, I ask the audience, please be seated. As police officer Michael Colombo dismisses recruit class 2014-01 for the final time. Have a wonderful night and please drive care. 